In order to actually get something done in a language, you typically have to use the libraries for it. So having good standard libraries is important. In the, this video and the ones following, we'll walk through a number of the standard libraries that you really need to know in Scala to get up to speed and start working with it. So first off, there's the question of how do you find the standard libraries? Well, scalalang.org has links to the APIs. This is the API for Scala 2.12. They made a change in format between 2.11 and 2.12. Um, when I've, you first pull it up, you get a page that looks something like this. And all the code is organized inside of packages. And all the standard libraries are in the package Scala. We mentioned earlier when we were talking about comments how you can include certain types of comments that start with the slash star star that are Scala doc comments. Those comments are the things that appear in this type of document. So this API basically gives you a listing over here of all the different declarations at the top level that exist inside of the standard library. They are classes and traits and objects. They have little circles next to them and they are organized in packages. So the lowest level is a Scala package, which has a number of things inside of it. We saw any and any val in some previous videos. And then there are other packages inside of those, and some of those have other packages inside of those. One of the things that you really have to be able to do in order to, to make you know, useful programs is input and output. You've seen me call print line. Uh, we also have, it would be nice to be able to do input from the user. Uh, we'll also talk about how to do input from files, but we'll start with just doing it from the user. The stuff that we want to input from the user is yeah, inside of this IO uh, package. So Scala.io, there is an object called stdin which has inside of it a number of methods that start off with read. So let's go ahead and let's create a different object. I've been using hello world for long enough. We'll make an object called libraries and actually you know what we're going to put it inside of a package. I put hello world inside of the default package but really you should not put many things inside of the default package. So I'm going to go ahead and create another package here. I'm call it, going to call it basics because this is for the chapter material on the basics of Scala. I'm actually going to move hello world over into basics and assuming that that did what it should, we should have another line up at the top here that says this is package basics. Just so you know, Eclipse gets very confused and unhappy if something is shows up as being in a package here and it does not have a matching package statement. Uh, can do weird things like your your application won't run. Let's go ahead and let's create another object. I'll call it libraries. I'll include an, a bit of the code from the different exploration of libraries here. We'll define our main without the O in the, in the name. Know that that wasn't a syntax error, it's just you can't run it. Unless main is defined the proper way, you can't run this. And what I'd like to do, simple example, kind of goes with some of the things we've typed in before. What is your name? And then I want to somehow ask them for their name. How old are you? And then I'd like to ask them their age, and then maybe we'd wind up doing something with it. So we need to figure out how to ask for things, and what I just typed in might actually surprise you that this compiles. This three question marks is something that is part of the Scala libraries. It is a perfectly happy expression, and it happens to provide something of type nothing. We'll talk more about nothing in the future, uh, but the nothing type, as the name implies, gives you back absolutely nothing. Uh, it's actually less than, than unit. And you can put this anywhere inside of your program that you don't know what it's going to do.
However, you should note that if it ever runs this, you get a not implemented error. Okay, so, so you really only want to, to put it in places where you're, you're not calling it, you're not using it yet. But if it ever tries to execute it, you'll get an error and you'll remember, oh yeah, I need to write that. It's a very handy way to put in code in places where you haven't figured out what to do yet. So I want to make a val for their name. And if we were to look back in the API, we would see that there is a read line method that gives us back a string. And so I want to call read line here. But you'll note that I'm getting this. Uh, read line used to be declared in a different part of the library. Now it's inside of that Scala.io. And so to make it so that we can see the proper version that we should use in the current Scala, I am going to hopefully type this properly. And I'm missing capital I. There we go. I import scala.io.stdin.underscore. And now what exactly is this doing? So import statements really are just ways for you to be able to use shorter names in Scala. You technically never have to put an import statement. There's actually for some things called uh, implicits. That's, that's not quite true. But it, for calling normal code like this, you would never have to use an import statement. I could have, instead of just writing read line, I could have said scala.io.stdin.readline. That's really the full name of read line. But I don't want to have to type that in every time that I call a read method. So if I'm going to be using these methods, I will typically do this. If you come from a Java world, you're used to having uh, import statements. In Java, you would have had a star, an asterisk here, instead of an underscore. In Scala, they use the underscore for this, this wildcard. And this basically says import everything. I could have been specific and said I'm only going to import read line. But as you can guess, I'm about to need to read something other than a string. So I'm going to import all of the methods that are inside of there to get their age val age equals read int and now if we were to run this there we go okay so that works as we want this has shown you the import statements, which really are just used to give to allow you to type in shorter names. It tells Scala that it should go look in places. Another interesting thing to note about import statements, I will generally put the majority of my import statements up at the top of the file, but imports can also be scoped the same way as declarations. So we talked about how name only exists from the point of declaration to the end of the curly braces it's in. If I had put this import inside of main, it would only be importing things for inside of those curly braces, uh, which there are times where that's helpful because you don't want to bring in stuff you know, into the current namespace for, for your entire program. You're just going to use it in a small area. We'll come back in uh, later videos and we'll talk more about the different libraries uh, that you can use in Scala for doing input and also for collections. Those are some of the very significant things that we have to give you some background in before you can go on and write more significant programs.